Good evening, everyone. Spencer Harp here with Sharp Engineering. I just want to give you guys an update on where we were um, and kind of what we were doing in regards to gearing. Uh, I saw a couple of guys tear up some engines this weekend, and I just want to go over some stuff to make sure everybody knew about some of the products that we offered, um, some of the new things that we're doing in terms of gearing and uh, split sprockets and so forth. Um, I'm up here at the shop tonight, and I've got a few things in front of me. I'll go through and show you. Uh, basically, we had one. Uh, racer this weekend he tossed the chain off and chain got wadded up by his water pump and it cracked the case on that so uh, if you've had that happen to you before you're familiar with the fact that that cost you around thirteen hundred dollars to have somebody take it apart take all your good internals put a new case on it that's assuming you can find a case fairly inexpensive uh, we've got some products along with hyper racing and others um, to aid in you know to kind of prevent that from happening uh, we started building these uh, these metal case savers, um, I don't know, six months ago or so. Uh, a lot of the guys know about them. Uh, they basically go in to a stock uh, case here. I'll show you, this is actually a sprocket cover, just a dingy one I found in the back. Um, but basically, to install that case saver, all you have to do is remove the dowel pins. Remove the dowel pins from the cover itself and then take and uh, lay the, the case saver on top of it. Let's see if I can show you right here from the side view and actually remove that much material from everywhere this case saver kind of interferes with the uh, interferes with the cover. So you basically take a flat disc and a grinder or if you've got access to a milling machine that works as well. Um, but basically just you know grind that cover back to where the distance from the mounting face to the push rod face is the same. So you know, our covers are made uh, using a 3 16th material to attach. Um, and so basically you take 3 16ths off each one of these pegs uh, and up here at the top surface where everything, your distance, your total distance remains the same from your sprocket uh, to your push rod. Now, after you do this, whether you're doing it on 0405 or an you know, 06 and newer engine, you still have to go in and adjust the push rod, you know, for the clutch. I made a few YouTube videos on how to do that. Um, so, you know, subscribe and take a look at some of our other videos um, to kind of aid you through that process. Um, but if you run this this case saver, uh, what it does is if the chain does come off for whatever reason, uh, there's a you know a small distance in between the sprocket and this outer piece. And it just allows the chain to spit out the bottom or wad up right here instead of wadding up up here by your water pump, which would then split the case. So I recommend everybody have one of these. Uh, you know, you can find them on our website, give us a call uh, and, and we can point you in the right direction. But we have them available for an 0405 um, all the way up to a, a basically a 16 GSXR 600. Uh, that's in our lineup. Another cool thing that we've got uh, that I'll show you that we started doing about two months ago is uh, put this down is we came up with we didn't really come up with anything. We just started we had these available, had these machines. Uh, these are a split sprocket for a 520 chain. They use our, you know, our current sprocket carrier um, and still, you know, allow, you know, don't require any modification to the carrier or anything, but allow you to change the sprocket without having to pull the hub um, on and off or the, you know, the whole bird cage and everything. Because our sprockets, um, if you recall, are inboard from our right rear bird cage. Um, which is kind of problematic when you're dealing with a solid sprocket because that means you have to take the entire birdcage off, which isn't that difficult. But if you're trying to do it fairly quick, um, the split sprockets, you know, drastically reduce the amount of time. So you don't have to pull all that loose. You just take six bolts loose, pop these sprockets off, pop the new ones on, and you're kind of back in business. Now, you have to obviously you have to adjust your chain tension in order to do that. And when we first launched for the first you know, year and a half or so, we didn't really have an easy way to slide the engine back and forth. And we were recommending everybody just adjust their wishbones back, which changes your wheelbase a little bit. But it's not, uh, you know, like I said, it's not the end of the world. It's fairly insignificant in the grand scheme of things in terms of, you know, messing with the vehicle dynamics because you're only, you know, moving the wheelbase maybe a 16th and you're doing it equally on both sides. Um, so we came up with an engine adjuster. Um, you know, I'm up here at the shop tonight. It's an engine adjuster. And what this does allows you to go through and use the existing hole in your motor mount that we would uh, pivot the chain tensioner off of. Um, and it hooks to the wishbone pickup point on the rear and slides the engine forward and back. So that's just another product that's there, makes tightening the chain up uh, substantially faster. Um, and you don't have to deal with, you know, ratchet straps and interfacing with the front half of the motor.
Now, if you guys will stay tuned for a few minutes, what we'll do is we'll, I'm going to pull up a spreadsheet we developed uh, over the past couple of weeks. That spreadsheet is going to aid you in uh, adjusting and calculating your particular gear range. It's an interactive spreadsheet. So uh, give me just a few minutes and I'll get that pulled up and show you how to walk through that. I'm back. Um, one other thing before we jump into the gear chart, uh, something we talked about briefly, and I sent out some little, uh, you know, some messages on, was the use of clip links in our chain. Um, probably the number one failure in uh, any kind of racing application is regarding the linking system that you're using for the chain. And that's going to be, no pun intended, but the weakest link. So if you use a clip link, what can happen is as the chain is traveling backwards, so you're rolling it off the trailer, that clip could come in contact with one of the guides or something like that and knock that clip off. So then when you go forward and you're racing around the racetrack, that outer piece pops off and now you've lost your chain. Um, so I highly recommend that everyone use a rivet style link for any chain application that you're using in racing. Either that or push the pin out, push the pin back in um, if you're doing it on like a 35 chain or something. But a rivet link, um, yes, they're inconvenient because you have to replace them. You know, there's a single use, but you take this link and there's a tool that brads out the end of it and um, you don't have to worry about it coming out or losing it and busting a case. All right, so now we're moving on to talk about our gear chart. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share a screen with you guys and show you um, basically how to navigate this chart. It's something I've got you know, a couple of hours um, in developing um, over the past couple of weeks. I'm always getting kind of calls and, you know, hey, what gear do I need to be on here? What gear do I need to be on there? And you know, what happens if the track does this? And is there a difference between running third gear and running fourth gear? And Mike Dyson did a pretty good job you know, of making that. I don't know if you guys got his last catalog, but if you did, Take a look in the back couple of pages and he goes through a discussion you know, where he's talking about, you know, final drive. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're in third gear or fourth gear uh, as to, you know, how the micro sprint or mini late model is going to perform. Now, if you're running a stock ECU and it hasn't been flashed, say in a different class, not necessarily in a mini late model, then, yes, there may be a performance advantage to running in third gear versus running, say, in second gear. And that's because from the factory, the motorcycle ECUs have basically gear based mapping. So in third gear, it may be a little bit richer than if it was in second gear. But on a mini late model, what we do is we unify all the fuel maps so, uh, you, and the ignition maps. So regardless of what gear is, the same fuel, same ignition, you know, you know, across all, all six gears. So with us, it's not that big of a deal. You will not see a difference running it in third or fourth. And, you know, one's going to, you know, somebody can argue that. Hey, there's you know less moving parts, or there's less rotating mass, or you know there's less mechanical loss, uh, or there's chain wrap efficiency. Talking about you know how the chain wraps around the, the driver. Um, you know, obviously, the smaller the gear, uh, the more wrap that the that the chain has, so the less efficient the chain is. But we're only talking. I mean, we're talking very small, insignificant amounts when you're looking at you know, all the other variables that are playing into this. Um, and yes, you know, no gain. Uh, should be ignored but we're talking you know gains that are that are so small that you can't really quantify them on the racetrack uh, we've made pulls on the dyno in different gears and uh and, and haven't been able to quantify it that way either so the efficient the efficiency loss is you know essentially negligible in a sense if you can run third or fourth gear it's the final drive ratio and that's the ratio from your crankshaft to your rear axle that matters so a 1091 or 11.0 or 12.0 final drive ratio that takes into account your gear reduction ratio on the rear and your transmission ratio. That final ratio is what you'll see in all of my diocese gear charts and in my interactive spreadsheet. Um, but we'll get into that in just a second and I'll show you the spreadsheet, how to use the spreadsheet. And just because I've got some time into it, I'm just gonna charge you guys a couple of bucks, you know, to go access it and download it. Um, but once you've got it, you can do it. And if I make an update to the spreadsheet or whatever, I'll send that to you free of charge or, or give you a link to it if you've got questions. Or if you need me to update the spreadsheet, and say add a gear combination that you don't see and I'll be glad to do that and work with you through gear selection. Um, like I said, I've just got a bunch of time in this stuff and you know, I got to kind of try to recuperate some of that. So without further ado, I'm going to share uh, my screen with you. I'm going to present the entire screen so that we can see it. And now you should have, you should see uh, what I'm seeing. And so this is the actual spreadsheet itself and what we have here is uh, a you know tabs at the bottom 
Now these are different sheets. So I've got one for 0405, one for 06 to 10, and one for 12 to 19. And that's because if you look up here at the primary ratios, um, you know, your primary ratio is slightly different year to year and your transmission ratios are different year to year. And so if you go to our store, I'll post a link in the comments of this video. If you go to our store, you can download this spreadsheet. Once you have this spreadsheet, it's going to show up on your computer in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. And you can work with it in Excel. It's going to look just like this. It'll say, you know, gearing Suzuki 04 to 14 GSXR 600. If you've got Excel, you can work at it in Excel. But I highly recommend for the interactive part, taking it and uploading this file to Google Drive. Um, so if you, all you need to do that is have a Gmail account. And once you've got a Gmail account, open up your drive, create a folder, new folder for gearing, and then drag and drop this spreadsheet uh, file into Google Drive. Now, if you work on it in the cloud, it's quite nice because now I can take and click this button here where it says open with Google Sheets. And I'll close my other one so that it doesn't crash out on me. And once you've got it opened up in Google Sheets, uh, it's pretty cool because now I can do what they call conditional formatting. Um, and so you saw how these cells right here got light, you know, were highlighted once I opened the spreadsheet. So if I click on one of these cells, nothing happens. Um, I have, it, there's nothing pops up on the right hand side, but let's just click on this one for example, and then we can go to uh, format and conditional formatting. And what you'll see is you'll see a, a, a set of rules that pop up over here on the right hand side. So if you're looking for, say a three eighths mile racetrack, we kind of want to be on an 0405, somewhere around a 10.9 final drive. All of that information can be found down here in the recommendations tab. I'll click on that so you can see it. Um, these are, to turn 14.8, you need to be running around, you know, a 10.9 final drive for three eighths, 11.3 final drive for a quarter, and so on. Um, once you guys start using it some more, you can make some notes out here in these cells to, you know, what you're running on a three eighths track, or you can even go as far as to put you know, specific tracks out here and say what final drive you wound up on for your own record keeping. But in order to get faster, you got to take good notes and we have to be able to reference those notes for future discussions. So jumping back over into sheet one, which is the 0405 tab, um, say I'm looking for all the combinations that will allow me to have a 10-7 final drive or close to a 10-7 final drive. So what I can do let me click out of it again. I hit cancel here. I click over here on this conditional formatting. And, and again, in order to get to that, you go to format, conditional formatting, and I can click on this spreadsheet, um, this drop down. And so what I'm looking for is I want it to highlight cells that fall somewhere between, say, a 10.6 and a 10.75. All right, a 10.76, just so we have a couple more options there and hit done. And what, you, what you'll do is you'll see that it'll automatically highlight all the different combinations that will allow you to get to that range. So for a 1071, uh, which is kind of where we start at on our house car, uh, you know, stock combination, it's gonna be a 1246. So that's gonna give you a 1071 final drive in fourth gear. Now, I can achieve a 1074 final drive if I run an 11 tube driver and a 44 tube rear sprocket. That'll give me a 1074 in fifth. Or I could get a 1074 in fifth running a 1248 sprocket combination. So here's your front sprocket, here's your back sprocket. Um, and these are the different miles per hour that you see based on a tire circumference, um, you know, up here at the top of the spreadsheet and a maximum RPM. Um, but it gives you miles per hour and it also, but that all of that's really not relevant. What you're looking for in this spreadsheet is what gear do I need to be on to hit a particular final drive? Um, so again, if I'm looking for say a 10.9, I could change this to say a 10.8 to 10.95 or let's see, let's do 11.0, right? And again, it goes out and it highlights everything that's there. So if I want a, a 10.96, I could be on a, 1249 in what's that fifth gear and i could also be on a 1247 in fourth gear to achieve you know a very similar final drive ratio again this is the number that matters not you know whether i'm in third fourth or fifth um and if i wanted to go to say run second gear 
and I can get to a 1081 by running a 1541 combination in second gear. Um, so again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different sprocket combinations to achieve a final drive ratio of 10.8 to 11.0. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, like I said, just something for us, you know, to aid me. Uh, and I figured it would benefit all of my drivers as well. And if you're running in 2006 to 2010, those transmissions are the same. And it's the same deal in this particular tab. You go to format, conditional formatting, and I can go through and click on that and change this over here to um, before and after. Again, the, the trick to that is right here. If you click on this value cell here, format rules, format cells, if it is between and you specify a number range, this is your bottom number, this is your upper number and hit done and it'll highlight the corresponding cell. So hopefully this helps everybody out. Um, and if, say you wanna know what a, uh, a, a 1241 combination will generate. I'm going to show you how to add a 1241 to the spreadsheet, even though it's not there. Right now, the lowest I go to uh, on the spreadsheet is a 42. So in order to make this change, you shouldn't have to do that, um, but I will show you just in case. I can scroll down and, and just do a box selection over all of the stuff in this particular column. Columns, plural. I can right click on that. I can cut that. Scroll back up and I'll paste all of that one cell down. All right, so what that did was that gave me a blank line here to mess with. Now I can take all the information from the line right below it, select it, right click, copy that, and paste it right here. All right, so now this line and this line are identical. Um, but what I can do is if I change this number here to a 41, box these numbers over here. As soon as I do that, all of those are going to update. And that's going to give me my final drive ratios in that particular cell. So if you've got access to Google or Microsoft Excel, um, you can edit this spreadsheet. Google Sheets, again, is much easier or, or much better because we can use conditional formatting rules to go through and highlight particular cells um, to help us find. So we don't have to search the entire spreadsheet for the, the sprocket combination. So again, I hope this helps everyone. Uh, it's going to be available for our, on our website. Uh, Follow the link in the comments below and you should be able to find it. Any questions or concerns, feel free to email me at spencer at sharpengllc.com.